And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Haifa Academy webinar. My name is Daniel Farrago. I am the Haifa Market Development Agronomist. Together with me today is Oded Rottenberg, Haifa's Senior Agronomist. And we are both from Haifa's headquarters, located in the city of Haifa in Israel. Uh, today's webinar, of course, uh, will address Haifa's fertilization solution for avocado. The content of today will be uh, a quick introduction, the avocado crop, an overview. Uh, I'm going to go through nutrition and, and management of avocado in Israel, in Mexico, and Colombia. We're going to go through Haifa products for avocado fertilization. And we're going to conclude with a summary and a session of questions. Um, about Haifa 360 approach, every time we compose Haifa solution, we take into consideration those three crucial points. The first one is farmer's mind to consider the needs and benefits of both crops and growers. First, we address the end user, his capabilities and his needs. Uh, precise plant feeding, we are aiming to maximize nutrient use efficiency. It means to provide the most accurate program based on our knowledge and experience. And pioneering, from, mean, from needs to innovative solutions. It's to provide the most advanced and quality products to ensure maximum profitability. Those three points reflect our core uh, philosophy, which is sharing our knowledge and experience to make the world a better place. We'll go through a quick overview about the avocado. Well, the avocado origin, well, avocado was uh, originated in Central America it was grown in the area already 10,000 years ago, while the oldest evidence we can find uh, from uh, Puebla in Mexico. Today's avocados uh, basically are hybrids of three main pure lines of avocados, uh, Mexican, Guatemalan, and Antillian. Uh, of course, each race has its own uh, properties based on the specific location in which the race was originated. Um, each race has its own uh, nutrient demand. However, most growers don't manage the fertilization accordingly. In this table over here, you can see some uh, specifications about each race. Well, today avocado is basically grown all over the world. After the discovery of Central America, avocado was spread all over the world and it's now cultivated in six continents, which is basically almost all over the world. Well, the world loves avocados. As we can see in this chart, more than 150 million hectares of avocados were planted around the world in less than 10 years. And uh, in 2016, the FDA announced that avocado is considered as a superfood. And even before that, the avocado consumption worldwide uh, was soaring to provide the high demand of avocado, mostly in developed uh, countries. Avocado producing countries in thousands of tons, as we can see in this chart uh, in front of us, uh, Mexico is the largest uh, country who's producing the largest amount of avocado uh, worldwide. And the countries, of course, that uh, we're gonna go through today in Mexico, Colombia and Israel, as you can see in the chart, are main players in the avocado production. Well, avocado fertilization, like uh, many other crops, is correlated to its phenological stages. Um, the plant physiology governs the demand of nutrients based on the tissue that is acting as sink, that is demanding uh, the nutrients. Now, the challenge is to provide the correct nutrient on the right physiological stage and at the precise, at precise dosage. If you look at this chart over here of nutrient remo removal per ton of yield in Haas variety, we can see some universal figures. Um, this is an important tool and we want to plan fertilization programs. We can see the high importance of nitrogen and potassium, of course. Avocado has high demand for nitrogen and mostly potassium. Therefore, logically, avocado uh, requires high levels of potassium nitrate to ensure proper development and high yields. 
In addition to the nutrient removal chart, uh, leaf analysis should also be uh, considered as a method to understand the current nutrient levels in the tree. And based on that, uh, it is possible to manage and adjust the fertilization program. Now, the numbers of samples may differ from country to country. Um, and the more samples you take, the more adjustments can be made on time. In this figure over here, we can see uh, the right leaves in which uh, need to be taken uh, to ANATU for analysis in order to receive uh, the correct result. Now, when we look at the nutrient range in leaves, uh, we can see the macro and secondary nutrients in, in, in percentage and the micro elements, micronutrients in parts per million. Again, the content may differ from a geographic location, environmental conditions, uh, genotype of the, of course, of the, of the avocado. And of course, of course, the phenological stage of the tree when the sample was taken. So we always need to make sure that the uh, number that we see in the chart is correlated to the specific phenological stage in which the plant is, uh, is about to be. We're gonna go through rapidly some uh, nutritional disorders in avocado. Um, not gonna go into every single details. And of course, there's a large variation uh, between plants and, uh, and locations, uh, but these are general guidelines of nutritional disorders uh, of nutrients. Well, nitrogen, we can see general chlorosis and reduced growth and phosphorus uh, deficiencies will might find necrosis in mature leaves. For potassium in fruit, we'll see blackening of vascular bundles and small caliber. And on mature leaves, we're gonna see necrotic spots. Uh, but magnesium deficiency, we'll see intravenial yellowing from the edges to the base in mature leaves. Calcium deficiency, we'll see leaf deformation and intravenial chlorosis. Manganese deficiency, we'll see inter intravenial chlorosis with small reddish or brown spots in young leaves. About young, about, sorry, iron deficiencies, we'll see intravenial yellowing and narrow dark green stripes along the veins in young leaves. Continuing with uh, zinc deficiencies, we'll see deformed fruits and deformed leaves. We'll born deficiency, we'll see abnormal fruit development, necrotic lesions and branches and leaves. The copper deficiency, we'll see small and deformed leaves and short internodes. Uh, about salinity damages, one of the main issues with avocado fertilization is its sensitivity to high electrical conductivity. Now, over fertilization or the use of some specific elements could cause tremendous damage and dramatic reductions of yield. So about salinity damages, avocado is very sensitive to sodium and chloride. Of a chloride toxicity, we're gonna to see reduced fruit growth and fruit filling, uh, causes necrosis and leaf margins. About sodium toxicity, uh, will cause chlorosis and necrosis spots. And of course, it interferes with the uptake of potassium, which is necessary for normal physiological functions of the avocado plant. Uh, so again, avocado is sensitive crop to salinity. High levels of these two elements will have negative effect on the production. In this picture, we can see um, some effects of different uh, concentration of chloride on the leaf tissue. Of course, the higher the concentration, the more negative impact on the leaf tissue. A uh, very interesting uh, job done by Ostrog and Alpai in 2007. Uh, we can see how uh, salinity will decrease yields in Haas. Uh, we can see the relatively yield on the left side and the salinity uh, in, in the electric conductivity at the bottom. And we can see the correlation between uh, the high electric conductivity to the drop of the relative or the potential yield in Haas variety. So therefore avocado basically is a crop that demands free sources of chloride and sodium. After a quick overview, we're gonna go through some uh, nutrition management of avocado in, in Israel. Specifically subjects on, in this uh, chapter, we're gonna see some facts and figures about Israel, some principles of avocado fertilization in Israel, annual fertilization program, soluble fertilizers recommended in Israel, 
and multi-coat agri-controlled release fertilizer used in Israel. Some facts and figures about, uh, about the nutrition, uh, about avocados specifically in Israel. There are about 10,000 hectares planted uh, of avocado, about 120,000 tons per cycle, about 400 hectares of, of new plantings annually, which are 60% Tas and the other 40% are other varieties. The altitude where avocados grow in Israel is from 200 meters below sea level to 450 meters above sea level. So the soil in Israel, basically there is high variation, but in general, we're talking about a pH of 7.5, which makes iron availability uh, limited. The annual precipitation is from 100 millimeters to 1000 millimeters from November to April. And planting density is about 560 trees per hectare. Uh, well, in, in the uh, map in front of us, we can see uh, a map of Israel, of course. Uh, Israel has Mediterranean climate. And the yellow green color at the top is the Mediterranean climate. At the bottom, the red color is the desert climate. In the circles in the map, we can see the areas where avocado is grown in Israel. So we can see that the mostly, uh, mostly the avocados grown where they're in the Mediterranean climate areas. But we can also see in the south part of Israel uh, that avocado is grown today in small pockets in the south where uh, desert climate uh, exists. So if we look at the uh, specific climate that we have in Haifa, which is this little dot in the north of Israel, uh, we can see that the uh, winter in Israel is humid. I mean, it's wet, it's rainy, and it's cold, while the summer is uh, hot and dry. And we, when you look at the flowering and fruits at avocado, which occurs around the month of, of March and April, um, and also about the fruit uh, growth, we'll see uh, uh, this area over here where we don't have precipitation. Uh, of course, all the avocado in Israel is grown under uh, drip irrigation systems to make sure that avocado will have uh, proper growth. Some three principles of avocado fertilization in Israel. First, the use of effluent water with high levels of NPK and micronutrients. There are high levels of calcium carbonate and magnesium oxide in soil and water, which causes high pH in the soil and in the water. And no nutrigation during the rainy, the rainy winter uh, which gives uh, the growers a great challenge of how to feed the avocado during the winter when uh, nutrigation or uh, fertigation is not possible. So uh, in order to uh, confront those uh, challenges, there is a constant monitoring of water quality and its content. There's a use of multi-K fast, which is acidic potassium nitrate with low pH, and incorporation of multi-coat agri, CRF, before the rainy season. If we look at the annual fertilization program, uh, which in, in kilos per hectare, so the, basically the, the program starts at late winter. At late winter, we talk, we're going to first look at the nitrogen application. There's a high level of, of nitrogen application between 50 to 100 kilos per hectare. Um, after at the spring, when the fruit, when the flowering and fruit set stage, there is a reduction of a nitrogen application and it stays constant through the summer until the harvest. That's when the levels of nitrogen drop to a minimum uh, through the winter. Uh, potassium application. Potassium application starts at the end of the winter with little amount of the potassium, but it, uh, of course, after the fruit set, there's, a, there's an increase of the potassium application and it stays constant all through the summer until the harvest that occurs in the fall. And after the harvest, again, there's a drop of the, uh, of the dosage and uh, it stays with the minimum uh, amount of application through the winter. About phosphorus application, uh, basically the phosphorus application stays constant uh, throughout the year. Uh, however, it drops just slightly after the harvest in the fall. In addition, there is an application about 1.5 kilos of chelated iron. That's in order to overcome the limitation of iron in the soil due to the high pH that we've discussed earlier. 
So if you look about the soluble fertilizer recommended in Israel, uh, Haifa offers a wide range of, uh, of water soluble fertilizer. However, I would like to uh, illuminate or highlight uh, four of them. The first one is the 27027, which is 1.1 ratio NPK, which is the typical formula that is used in the avocado industry. The second one is the 23723 with micro elements with a ratio of 313 NPK. This formula is more uh, aimed for poor soils uh, that is lacking micro elements. Uh, of course, with a, a multi K fast that we've discussed before, the, uh, the ideal source of low pH potassium nitrate. And another uh, product is uh, Haifa phosphoric acid, which is aimed uh, for, several, uh, for several causes. The first one is to give uh, as phosphorus a uh, source. And the other one is to reduce the pH. And the third one is to have uh, maintenance in the irrigation system, which is a very important thing to do in Israel. So the multi-coat agri controlled release fertilizer for the avocado urch orchard. So this is, in this technology, Haifa water soluble fertilizers are basically coated with a thin polymeric, polymeric layer that enables the nutrients to be released according to the specific longevity based on the crop demand. Now the greatest advantage in, is this, that we can provide a, a stock of nutrients in the soil available for immediate consumption of the plant. Like we can see here in this chart, um, in the gray line, we can see conventional application. It could be granular or it can also be water soluble application, uh, which the application is by pulses. Uh, every time there is a pulse of water or a pulse of, uh, of uh, fertilizers, uh, there is uh, there, it's the constant, there's no constant um, availability of nutrients for the plant. However, with the multi coat controlled release fertilizer, with a single application, we can find uh, that there is a constant, uh, constant uh, supply of nutrient in the soil. Uh, and of course, uh, we designed the product that will, it'll match the crop demand according to its uh, physiological, physiological stage and its longevity. So Multicot Agri Junior for Avocado Orchards. Uh, junior, it means Avocado Orchards, Young Orchards. Uh, we can find two formulas available in Israel for this uh, segment. You know, the 17714 with eight months of longevity, which is the ideal uh, formula for nurseries and poor soils. And the other formula, the 368 with microelements for 12 months longevity. This is a special formula specifically for avocado, which is today is considered a common practice in Israel to apply this product specifically at the first year of planting, but also at the second and third year afterwards. So for nursery and young trees, a multi agri solution, uh, we can provide those two formulas. In this table, you can see the rate, uh, the recommended rates uh, for the three first year after planting. And for bearing trees, we can find also two formulas, the 19328 with microelements and 2225 with microelements, one with eight and the other was 12 months of longevity. And we can see also the rate, which is in uh, kilos per tree, actually. So with a single application of multi algae, we can find multiple benefits. First, uh, feeding the plants according to their needs, uh, which improves nutrient use efficiency and enables reduced application rates. With a single application per season, we can save time, labor, and other resources. It they have been applied independently of the irrigation system, like we've discussed before, and gives us an advantage at the application during the winter when nutrigation or fertigation is not possible. It's a sustainable solution uh, to minimize the environmental impact of uh, fertilizers. And at the bottom line, it, uh, it's a cost effective solution uh, for plant nutrition. Um, Application of multi agri in bearing orchards at planting will apply the multi agri close uh, to the root zone, but not too close, uh, as you can see here in the picture. And for established orchards, we're going to also try to apply it uh, close to the root zone to be uh, available for the root system. And we will uh, recommend of using a mechanized uh, applicator in order to uh, cover ground much faster and much more efficiently. 
In this chart in front of us, we can see some proven results, a demo in Haas Avocado done in the north part of Israel. Um, we can see results of two consecutive harvests from 2015 to 2017 of three different uh, rates. Uh, the first one is 1.5 kilos per tree multi agri, and the second one is two kilos per tree. And the third one, the dark green, is the farm practice. And the first, uh, in the first year, multi agri of 12 months of longevity, 27 to 18 was used. And at the first year over here, we can see the Haas, which is the main variety, and the Ettinger, which is the pollinator variety. We can see that uh, actually there is not uh, much difference between the three treatments. There is even a slight advantage to uh, the farm practice. What we've done after seeing the uh, result of this harvest, uh, we have adjusted the formula and we have elevated the, uh, the content of potassium in the, in the formula. And we can see the results at the second year in the year and the harvest of 2017, we can see a dramatic change in the results. Uh, we can see the same uh, performance between uh, Haas and Ettinger. And we can see the, uh, the treatment with multi agri, both 1.5 kilo and two kilos, gave incredible results of 32 and 35 kilo and tons, tons per hectare, while the, uh, the results of the, the, the yield in the farm practice were much lower. So if we, we see, if we look at the average of two consecutive harvests, we can see that the results of the yield of multi agri gave 30% higher yield. And that's due to the fact that the, uh, that the formula was adjusted and more potassium was added. And we can see absolutely clearly the results of the high potassium rates and the use of multi agri in avocado in Israel. That was my part for now. I'm gonna transfer the control to Oded. We will continue from this point all the way to the end of the presentation. Go ahead, Oded, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Daniel. So let's move. I'm Odette, senior agronomist in Haifa from the headquarter. Let's move from Israel to Mexico, a huge avocado market, the biggest one uh, in the world. And we will see Haifa experiments, experience from this country. So let's go to see the nutrient management of avocado in Mexico. Subjects regarding Mexico, facts and figures, Fertigation, which is actually combined both drench, which is the injection of nutrient solution directly to the soil, where there is no irrigation system, plus a nutrigation, fertigation, CRF control release fertilizers, the combination of control release fertilizers with nutrigation. We will see foliar solutions recipes, which are a common practice also in Mexico, and the use of the our NutriNet software, which is an excellent platform to provide the recommendations. Facts and figures concerning Mexico, altitude 1600 to 2200 meters above sea level. Most of Zocado is grown in two main Mexican states, Michoacan states, with an average of 1620 meters above sea level and Jalisco of 1,520 meters above soil level. Total annual precipitations between 1,000 to 1,150 millimeters during the rainy summer, rainy summer season, which is from June to October. This is a subtropical climate and it's rainy from June to October. Temperature average range between 15 to 25 Celsius centigrade. pH acidic from six to in a few places, 7.5, and generally speaking, soils, which is volcanic origin with a low pH in general. A fertilization by drenching, this is a Haifa recommendations. I would like to repeat that drenching is meaning to inject directly to the soil nutrient solutions. There is no uh, fertigation system, irrigation system, so during the dry season, it used to apply by drenching. So we can see here on the left-hand side, the crop stage, flowering to fruit set till the harvest below. 
kilo per hectare and the recommended fertilizers we can see with polyfeed or multi-NPK as well as Haifa Cal calcium magnesium, calcium nitrate and Haifa mag magnesium nitrate and the total plant nutrients which are applied 78 nitrogen, 56 P25, 113 K2O, 35 calcium oxide and five units of magnesium oxide. The nutrition scheme, the most uh, safe, simple, and ensuring uh, safe fertigation without any possibility or risking of precipitation and sedimentation is either the two or three tanks. While in tank A, we can put, we can pour in our NPK soluble, fully soluble, enriched with microelements and polyfeed. And in tank B, calcium nitrate and magnesium nitrate. Haifa Cal and Haifa Mag, and in case would be necessary to adjust the pH, usually in alkaline uh, areas, tank C is needed in order to add the acids. So this is a most efficient, simple way to provide fertigation. And it's very also important to take into consideration that these three fertilizer types are also suitable for foliar spray purposes. Uh, first of all, just to start with, the multicoat uh, is recommended for the nursery stage. We can see here uh, recommendations, completely commercial recommendation from Mexico, where the uh, multicoat agri 1225-12 IP1, four months release, is applied at a rate of five gram per liter or can be mixed in five kilo per cubic, one cubic meter of substrate. And that's for the nursery substrate. And always this multicoat is combined with a slight added fertigation with both a polyfeed triple 19 and magnesium nitrate, Haifa mag uh, as well. Uh, when we're going out from the, to the transplanting stage, moving from the nurseries to the outdoor, so we can see here below. Uh, the commercial Mexican formula 18612 with two MGO and micro elements. And below in the table, we can see on the left hand side the tree age, in the middle, gram per tree. And as in the case of the nurseries, here also we used to combine a Haifa Cal and Haifa Mag. When two technologies meet, we can recommend both CRF control release fertilizers plus nutrigation, fertigation. So before the rainy season, this is during the, I would like to repeat the rainy season is from June to October. This is a, a rainy summer. So before the rainy summer, Multicot Agri is applied at a range of 1.1 to 1.3 kilo per tree and afterwards, Nutrigation system is recommended, and we can see below in the table, based on the stage, fruit set to 5.7 millimeter diameter, 5 to 7 millimeter up to 40 to 60 millimeter, and 40, 60 up to harvest. So here, in this case, we are adapting the nutrigation scheme. We can see we start with polyfeed, high P polyfeed, 1243, 12. And the, afterwards, we're switching to the two tank system where polyfeed 10, 10, 43, high and K2 ratio polyfeed 10, 10, 43 is fertigated, combining with Haifa Cal and Haifa Mag. So these two technologies are providing, we can see below the nutrient supplied by Multicot Agri, the NPK calcium and magnesium by the nutrigation and in total, this avocado area is fertilized with 104 nitrogen, 150 P25, 220 K2O, 32 calcium oxide, and 25 magnesium oxide. Foliar nutrition, it's a completely a commercial and a popular way of a fertilization. Uh, in uh, Mexico, a typical uh, foliar nutrition recipe, we can see here on the left hand side, the recommended uh, fertilizer, 
in the middle the concentration and on the right side the objective so we can see that we can actually cover the avocado growing stages also by providing uh, this sort of an added uh, foliar nutrition with these fertilizers we can see here in the table. Haifa Protec, the objective of Hypotervic, this is a preventive control of the Phytophthora. There are actually two commercial methods in uh, Mexico. The one is foliar spray with three to five kilo in 2000 liters of water per hectare. This is a preventive one, whereas there is no Phytophthora uh, detected. And the other one where there's already, there is Phytophthora in the tree, it used to apply this uh, product by injection directly to the trunk. This is unique <coughs> application only in the avocado one. And there are two ways of applying it, either direct injection to the main trunk or alternatively inject to the three, three injection to the secondary branches. This way of application, we can see below on the right hand side, directly to the trunk is actually uh, preventing uh, uh, quickly the Phytophthora in the tree. The ultimate way to share knowledge, we can use successfully our Haifa Nutrinet uh, software. This is an excellent platform to provide recommendations. Uh, this is a plant nutrition expert system, updated database on Haifa crops and solutions generating of nutrition programs step by step. It incorporates local weather data, soil analysis, water quality for irrigation and much more. The service is free and actually you don't have to pay anything. You can see here below the Nutrinet, uh, the website address, nutrinet.haifa-group.com. We can see here our agronomist, Mexican agronomist, which is working in the avocado area in Mexico, Gustavo Velasquez, which is currently working already, working with the Nutrinet. And the Nutrinet is providing a full program. We can see here below the nutrient requirements based on the growth stage in Mexico. On the left-hand side, the growth stage, days, macro, secondary, and micronutrients, which are recommended by the Nutrinet based on the details and the details that Gustavo, that we are feeding uh, the Nutrinet uh, as far as Mexico is concerned. So, no, so in, we can see here just an example of one stage. So the Nutrinet is providing list of recommended fertilizers. We can see the table and below the, the selected fertilizers, we can select fertilizers which are existing in the Nutrinet or alternatively select any fertilizers we have in our warehouse, in, in our area, which are not existing in the Nutrinet. Uh, the Nutrinet is providing precise amounts of fertilizers in the tanks. Here also it's important to take into consideration that we can choose the number of tanks, one tank or two tanks or three tanks whatsoever. In this specific example, uh, it was decided to, cho to choose just two tanks since in Mexico, the fertigation is quite simple and the nutrition scheme of using just two tanks, tank A for polyfeed and tank B for Haifa Kral and Haifa Mag is quite a common practice. So let's move from Mexico, which is a huge avocado market to Colombia, which is a, also a extremely important avocado market. And also the avocado is uh, growing fast in uh, Colombia. And also Haifa, we have in Colombia office and people involved in the avocado crop. So subjects regarding Colombia, facts and figures, fertigation, Colombia is a tropical climate and there is no, it's not a common uh, irrigation system. So the drenching system is uh, completely popular and used. The challenge in Colombia is to obtain the large fruit size. We will see foliar recommendations of Haifa, 
platform, avocado in Colombia, and also here, as in the case in Mexico, uh, the use of our excellent platform, the Nutrient, the Nutrient software. Facts and figures regarding Colombia. Uh, area, there are 32,000 hectares of us. It's very important to note that every year, the us area is growing in around about 2,000 hectares. Altitude from 1,500 meters to 2,600 meters above sea level. Soils, very low pH, high leached. There is high aluminum contents and phosphorus, calcium, and zinc deficiencies are of common. Annual rainfall from 1,600 to 1,300 meters, uh, millimeters, sorry, millimeters. Plant density, 205 to 285 trees per hectare. And regarding the harvest, there are two harvests, two harvest actually, the main one and the secondary harvest. We can see on the right hand side, the main three grown avocado areas in Colombia. Here around harvest, it's true there are uh, two main uh, there are uh, two main uh, uh, areas regarding the harvest, the higher altitude main harvest from January uh, to April, the green one, and the lower altitude main harvest, the green, the green one in the, in the right hand side from more or less from August to, to December. But we could we can say that generally speaking, there is we have 11 months almost all year round harvest in Colombia. Fertilization methods. Currently in Colombia, avocado is mostly grown without irrigation system. Uh, granular fertilizer are used with low efficiency. 30 to 50% are lost due to precipitations, wash off and leaching. Drench application is recommended by Haifa with very good results. The use of multicot agri controlled release fertilizers are also recommended for maximum efficiency. The advantages of drenching uh, it employs highly efficient soluble fertilizers, high impact due to precise placing of the nutrient solutions, suitable for areas with poor accessibility, low application cost, nutrition matches growth requirements, and actually it reducing losses, thus higher nutrient use efficiency is uh, obtained. Here round drenching program, kilo per hectare. We can see on the right hand side, the recommended fertilizers of Haifa Colombia, multi NPK, Haifa MAP, Haifa NCAL, this is a brand of calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. And the left hand side, the NP25K2O calcium oxide and magnesium oxide, which are applied uh, every two months in January, March, May, July, September, November. And the total nutrients which are applied, we can see below nitrogen 150, 772 P25, 202 K2O, 59 calcium oxide, and 29 magnesium oxide. The dosage which is recommended, it's recommended to dilute in a tank of 1000 liters, these fertilizers we recommend here, and to apply by drench four liter per tree. The growers challenge in Colombia, that's something we figured out immediately when we started to work in this market uh, five, seven years ago, we found a very, relatively very small size of the avocado fruit. So the growth challenge and based on the experience we have already from other countries and also from Israel, was to obtain, is to obtain large fruit. So the granular soil application of avocado, we can see on the left side, is a common practice to apply on the soil a granular a fertilizers. And then we started to switch to drench with our high quality chloride free soluble fertilizers, the program we've just seen. And we can see on the, life, on the right hand side, the yield with the common 
practice by granular fertilizers was, an average, was around about 10 tons per hectare. And slowly, gradually, but surely, we started to achieve considerably a higher yield and up to 12 tons per hectare comparing to 10 tons. This is a dramatic uh, a change and it's a win-win situation, both yield and larger size. So higher yield and larger fruit with high fat treatments being obtained with excellent results. Uh, we can see here a work from Israel regarding the same issue, obtain large fruit. This is a work done in Israel, in, also in the Haas, as in Colombia. The objective was to increase the size of the fruits in order to improve the price, mainly with those varieties of small fruits. The treatment was a foliar one, not drench, foliar in Israel. The product was a mix of foliar spray of multi-K, mix a 2%, mix with 0, with 0.8% paclobutrasol, plus 3% hyphacal, and the volume was 1,000 liter per hectare at flowering stage. So we can see here, dramatically larger fruit size on the left-hand side, and even considerably more yield on the right side. So with the benefit of Haifa treatments, two benefits, increased yield and fruit size, and higher revenue for the grower, which we can say that it is the same more or less issue that we have recently obtained in Colombia. Recommended foliar nutrition, as in the case we've just seen in uh, Mexico, also in Colombia, we are uh, recommended the uh, foliar spray recipes. We can see here, of course, with the Colombian products on the left hand side, the recommended product, high P polyfeed 13, 36, 13, enriched with microelements. Afterwards, we switch to high K, high K, NK ratio polyfeed 10, 10, 43 with microelements. And also the same product we saw for the fertigation scheme here, we are also applied by a foliar spray. Haifa N Cal GG, this is the calcium nitrate in Colombia, and also Haifa Protec is foliar sprayed. And we can see on the right hand side the objective of each application and the product. The IP is to improve flowering and fruit set. The high K201 of the polyfeed is to increase size and fruit weight. The Haifa Cal GG is improving cell structure and is extending shelf life. And the Haifa Protec is in order to induce resistant fruit uh, tree resistant, increasing sprouting, is providing also potassium. And as I've mentioned, it's also preventive uh, as far as in case of phytophthora. The noted program for avocado in Colombia, this is in a case of our agronomist in Haifa, Colombia, namely Andres, which is already using successfully this excellent platform in order to provide recommendation uh, in Colombia. And this is just another case of Andres uh, for avocado. We can see here below in the table, the requirements of the nutrients. This is of course in Spanish because this he did it in Spanish. There are many languages and we can see before him, the growth stage is still in English based on the growing stage in Colombia. This is based in Colombia and the macro, secondary and micronutrient which are recommended. So here also, nutrient program for avocado in Colombia, the nutrient requirement for the entire crop cycle, we can see. And below, we see the complete list of recommended fertilizers that we are choosing and existing in the nutrient. Again, I would like to repeat, in case there is a specific, specific fertilizer which is not existing in the nutrient, we can choose any fertilizers we need and to insert it, to add it to the nutrient. And here it's, a, it's providing precise, precise amount of fertilizers in tanks. Again, in this case, it was decided to choose two tanks. We can choose one tank, two tanks, three tanks, and also the recommended fertilizers and the quantity of each fertilizer to apply in each tank. Due to the fact 
that uh, Colombia has a, a extremely leached soil and a huge amount of rainfalls. The conventional phosphorus is not efficient because it's completely leached. There is no, it's not remaining in the root zone. It is completely leaching to the to the underground uh, water. So in Colombia, we are testing and we are working currently with multi-coat MEP, monoammonium phosphate. Multi-coat map is, uh, is applied. Uh, we are recommending and applying 500 gram per tree, twice per year. So uh, in total, one kilo per tree of multi-coat map is providing fully efficient phosphorus which we know perfectly that in a normal soils under normal in a leaching soils under heavy rainfall the phosphorus is not efficient and 80 to 90 percent of the phosphorus we are lost so in this case the multi coat map is the answer is providing solution to this reality and therefore multi coat map is a success product phosphorus coated phosphor product in colombia So after see all the introduction and the Haifa experience from these three very important uh, avocado markets, the Israeli market, the Mexican market, and the Colombian market, we will see here which Haifa products for avocado fertilization we are recommending. So just we can see that the Haifa Pioneer Solution, as far as the avocado, we can actually we can offer everything we can offer products fertilizer all of them fully soluble all of them chloride free and sodium free for foliar nutrition for nutrigation for soil application biostimulants and also the control uh, release uh, nutrition by crf we can offer everything we can provide any solution either each one alone or combination as we have seen in the presentation. multi k potassium nitrate, this is a product based on the avocado experience. We have the pure potassium nitrate, multi k GG, the multi k enriched with phosphate plus P, multi k plus zinc, and multi k plus sulfur. This is the main four multi k uh, which are recommended based on our experience in the avocado. The soluble straight fertilizers we have, we can see the Haifa MTP monopotassium nitrate, Haifa mag magnesium nitrate, bitter mag magnesium sulfate, Haifa soap potassium nitrate, Haifa cal uh, calcium nitrate, phosphoric acid uh, below also Haifa P and our uh, fully soluble chloride and sodium free NPK soluble enriched with microelements, a uh, polyfeed on the right hand side. Haifa Protac, this is the systemic PK fertilizers for both foliar spray and for trunk injection. Haifa Micro chelated micronutrients. We have a, a Haifa micro combi, which is a mixture of all the micro uh, elements. A Haifa micro zinc EDTA, chelated EDTA. We have two types of iron, the one with EDDHA and the other one with EDTA. Haifa micro copper and Haifa micro molybdenum. The Haifa bonus. This is a special technology to boost your crops with Haifa foliar products. This is providing complementary fertilization, corrective nutrition, growth boosting, and specific induction in a few crops, such in the case of the mango. In the mango, we can induce flowering uh, with uh, our fertilizers. Fertilizer for foliar application with the bonus technology. We have the Haifa bonus, which is exclusive products, high K products for foliar spray purposes, the polyfeed foliar, Haifa MTP, Haifa mag, Haifa potic, and also the micro elements. The Haifa bonus, this is unique 
targeted foliar formula, high K formula, uh, with prolonged action, prolonged leaf absorption of the K and also of the nitrogen. This is Haifa bonus exclusively targeted for foliar spray purposes. Haifa Turbo K, this is a granular NPK fertilizers for soil application uh, where there is no irrigation system and mainly could be applied at, uh, in, a, in during the rainy uh, season. This is a top quality potassium source based on Haifa Multi K contains carefully balanced K, Mg, and sulfur, contain an optimum balance of ammonium to nitrate, enriched with iron and zinc, and low in sodium and chloride. Multicot Agri controlled release fertilizers. The Multicot Agri is uh, permitted a single application per year, rather repeated application. It is improving the nutrient use efficiency, maximum nutrient use efficiency. The fertilization is independent of the irrigation system. And here below we can see special formula with controlled release zinc. Zinc is extremely important for avocado. And the two formula is the multicotagri 2778 with microelement and one unit of pure zinc, 12 months longevity the young orchard, what we call the junior one, and the Maticot Agri 19, 224, plus 1.1 pure zinc, plus microelements, also 12 months uh, release, and the purpose is for bearing orchards. And the last one, it's uh, our new line, Haifa Steam, Grow Strong. This is our uh, recent new a line of high steam. We can provide the high steam UMK, high steam vigor, high steam booster, high steam vital, high steam energy, high steam V, and high steam force. So, what you can take home from these high uh, experiments in this important crop worldwide? Haifa offers a wide range of products for avocado orchards product suitable for various methods of applications, high quality product with low sodium and chloride, and you can enjoy our global experience and presence. Thank you very much. Please visit our website here below where you will find the presentation. Thank you very much. Joshua, take care. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Oded, for this very professional and useful uh, information. We have a few questions. Uh, first, I want to remind that uh, this presentation and other webinars will be on the uh, Haifa's website and can see it or send it uh, to your friend if you miss it. A uh, question, a specific question regarding products and uh, specific uh, programs for specific uh, places will not uh, going to answer because it's uh, uh, we have no time. But you can send an email to us and we'll uh, try to give you an answer. And so the question is, uh, what is the volume of the foliar feeding uh, application recommended? Uh, in Israel, uh, we will answer Daniel or myself. In Israel, between uh, 800 uh, to 1,000 liters per hectare. In Mexico, it's also depending on the tree size, whether we have a small area, small trees which need two to three liters of water, or to huge trees size like in old trees like in Mexico, which each tree need around about 10 to 20 liters. So from 300 liters in Israel up to even 1,000 to 2,000 liters per hectare in Mexico. So it's a bit uh, varied from country to country. Okay, thank you. And um, technically, how, how you recommended to do the drench uh, application, physically where to apply the... What, what we actually, what we have noticed, then uh, where the place we are, uh, providing the drench in this specific site, when we coming back after a few months, 
we can find a very nice uh, development of root zone, this white, hairy, white uh, uh, roots. So we recommend if it's possible in the next uh, application or in the, ne in the next year to come to, to go back if it's possible and to apply the nutrient solution in the same area of last year where, the, where this uh, high developed uh, hairy white uh, roots are already existing thanks to the drench we applied last year. So try to go back to the same place of last year to apply again the, uh, by drenching. Okay, thank you. And uh, how can I choose the right uh, control release fertilizer uh, that suit my needs, where I can uh, make the decision what to use. I'll take this one on it. Um, but basically, it's uh, it's quite complicated to choose the correct formula. Um, we have a very wide range of, uh, of formulas, and you can also tailor made a new formula specifically to a specific condition. Uh, I would recommend on contacting a Haifa agronomist uh, in your territory in order to uh, create a specific solution that will be adequate to the specific location. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Uh, regarding <coughs> soil, uh, the specific soil uh, analysis that I, where the grower have for his uh, uh, plot, how can he uh, use this, take account of this information in the program? Well, ba basically, uh, soil analysis should be analyzed together with Haifa agronomist in order to create uh, a correct uh, solution. Um, it's a very important tool to take into consideration when we put a program together. Uh, but again, I would completely recommend on doing that together with Haifa agronomist. Uh, so the analysis uh, will be uh, professional. And because also the Haifa agronomist is more uh, aware of the, of the solution that we can provide based on the soil analysis. So again, like in the previous question, uh, or previous answer for the previous question, uh, I would recommend them consulting with Haifa agronomist to receive a more uh, accurate uh, response or solution. A similar question regarding uh, water analysis, if it's can, uh, uh, the nutrient net, you can uh, use this uh, information. The Again, the, uh, to... you want to answer with it? Oh, okay, definitely. You can uh, you can add the water analysis to the NutriNet, and the NutriNet will adjust uh, the recommendation based on the water analysis uh, uh, findings. Definitely, yes. You can uh, insert the water analysis. Okay, Daniel. A uh, question for you. You said that uh, you. You can uh, short the time until the tree start to bearing fruits. How can it? Uh, how much it can uh, uh, help to to short the um... uh, to 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 get the tree quicker into production? Yeah. I mean, uh, we have evidence from some parts of the world that it could be very dramatic, up to two years. Uh, of having uh, the trees uh, in early production. And again, it really depends on uh, the farmer's practice, how good the farmer is, and he, if he's really uh, able to, uh, to give a good solution by his own uh, methods. Um, it also depends on the solution that we create, like you've seen in the results that we, I've, I've shown uh, in the avocado in North of Israel, the first formula was not 100% correct. So, uh, it's, it, it could be very dramatic uh, uh, you know, results if we can find the right solution. It, again, it really depends on many, many factors, but let's take in consideration that at least one year or even more, uh, or even more in order to, uh, to, give, uh, to give quicker uh, results, uh, to get the, the tree quicker into production. Okay, thank you. I think uh, our time is up. Uh, for those uh, that we didn't answer the question, please send us an email and we'll try to answer all the questions. Regarding specific questions about the NutriNet, you can see the webinar and more materials on our website. 
And thank you everybody for coming. It's, hope to see you are in our next webinars. Thank you, Odette. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Josh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. Thank you very much.